One of the wonderful things about property investment is how many different ways you can approach it. Well, today we're going to give you just one way, but it's our way. So we're going to share that with you now. So we'll talk about the type of properties we're targeting. We'll talk about the areas that we've got our eyes on. But Rob, as always, as we've been saying since the very beginning, you've got to start with the basics. You have. When you invest in property, wherever you invest, whatever your strategy is, you should be looking for the fundamentals. And they are often things like transport links, employment opportunities, what's the schooling like, what investment is due in that area, what investment has been recently as well. It's just looking at an area and going, okay, as an investment proposition, does this area give my property the best chance of success? So always, always make sure you get the fundamentals right. And of course, that's the first thing we do when we assess any investment. Luckily in the UK, there are lots of places that do. But something else that we tend to target is mostly new build homes. But Rob, there are multiple reasons why we like new builds and newish properties. The very simple one to start with is maintenance, which as a hands-off investor, you want to be getting involved in as little as possible. That's right. Now, of course, things can still go wrong. It reduces your risk. And one of the ways your risk is reduced is that you will get a guarantee. And it's a 10-year guarantee. And that doesn't cover you for everything, but it will cover you for things like major structural damage. Now, it won't cover you things for like cosmetic stuff, but it does cover the bigger, more expensive stuff. And that's really appealing. So it reduces your risk and it reduces your costs as well, because you don't have to be spending on maintenance as much, certainly in the beginning. Another reason why new build is so attractive is, well, because it looks so good. New build properties are great for rentals because you put it on the market and it's like, hey, do you like this brand new place? Would you like to live here? Now, of course, it's only new and nice and shiny once and at the beginning, but again, you're just stacking those advantages in your favor. Time comes into play, but that's what being hands-off is all about, right? Is picking assets that are gonna give you the least hassle and a new builds will stack the odds in your favor. So we've got the basics of our approach in place now. We've got those fundamentals for the obvious reasons that we talked about. And we're talking about new properties for the reasons of less maintenance and easier rentals, among others. But that still leaves a lot of property that you could buy. And you don't want to buy all of it, so you need to narrow it down a bit further. But let's focus in a bit more, Rob, on the type of property that we're looking for. Because we've developed our thinking over the years about the type of property that we go after. And there's something we've been talking about over the last maybe a year or so, that which is trophy assets. So tell us what a trophy asset is and why it's interesting for this strategy. What is a trophy asset? It's a one-off. It's something special. So let me give you an example. It could be a penthouse in an apartment block, but not just an average penthouse in an average apartment block. It's going into the best developments in that town or city. Now, if you have the best of something, then people always want the best. But when there's a finite resource, as in there's only one that's the best, then you are in a very good position. And what we found, and that you may find surprising to hear, is that they actually tend to yield quite well because you don't compare a two-bed apartment to a two-bed penthouse in terms of rental amounts. Then you've got the property that everybody wants. And the market you let to then opens up to different people. So you find that you've got executives at the highest level, or footballers or other sports stars who want to rent these properties. Because in any market, whether it be a recession, a boom, or anything in between, people will still always want the best. Of course, properties like this are going to be more expensive, and that does make it a bit more of a niche strategy, because as an individual, you need a lot of money to make it work. And it also introduces a bit more risk because if you're putting more money into one property, then it means you're not going to be able to afford as many other properties, which means you're not as diversified. It also means that you're charging a higher rent, which means that you've got a smaller pool of potential tenants who are willing and able to pay that rent, which means that if for whatever reason the property is empty, then it is going to have a fairly significant effect if that one property makes up a large proportion of your portfolio. But the flip side of that is that, well, that's why it works because it is expensive and many people can't access them that means there's less buyer competition which is why as rob said the yields are actually better than you think but even if you can't or don't want to stretch to a true trophy asset there's still a general principle that we follow of looking at high quality properties that moves us on to talk about houses now because you don't get houses that often in city centers but you can get them close to major cities and that's something we really like it's that fundamentals points again 
Now, you're looking for fast train links. You're looking for good transport routes. So is it drivable? Can you get in in a reasonable, commutable time? You tick that box. But then one of the things that new builds get criticised a lot about is that they can just look a bit samey, boxy, you know, nothing special. But you can get new builds that look special. And that's what we do. So it's looking for something with a bit of design flair. It's looking for something a bit more high end. You are then competing in a different market. If your property is at the top end of what's available in that local market, then you're going to be at the top end of the rental market as well. And the same principles apply to the capital growth point. While we do it with houses and we talk about trophy assets, you can still apply this to city centres and just go for the best developments. That's right. We've talked before about how we don't have a dog in the fight when it comes to the houses v apartments debate. We are fans of both of them. But when it comes to apartments, the same rules apply for everything that we've just been talked about. If you can go for the best developments or go for developments that are special in some way, there's something unique about them, then for the same reasons we've talked about, they tend to rent better and have the best growth. So we've talked a lot about the type of property. And of course, when you're thinking about what to buy, you've got to be thinking about where to buy it. And I think property investors in general have had a bit of a shift on this. There's very much a bias towards people investing close to where they live. Yet that's sort of what you would do. But for various reasons over the years, I've seen a change away from this. Investors are far more open to investing wherever, almost geographically, wherever makes sense, rather than just going for the convenience or the comfort of being close to home. But Rob, when it comes to our views, it's not something we've made a secret about. At the beginning of each year, talk about the areas, the hotspots that we like, the areas that we think are up and coming. But the great thing is there are loads of good places to invest at the moment. It's a good market and it's actually hard to get it wrong. But what you want to do is get it really right. So follow the fundamentals that we talked about earlier. Make sure you understand why you're investing in those areas. And then if it's a new area to you, do loads and loads and loads of research. So that's what we're doing. The objectives for all of those are the same. So this is geared to suit people like us who want to be more hands-off, who've got a relatively long investment horizon and who appreciate yield, who want to be putting some money in their pockets every month, but are aware that capital growth historically has been where the majority of the gains come from. Get very focused on what you want from property. Most people don't do this. Get very clear with what you want how much of that thing that you want is going to cost you, how investment can get you to that place, and what type of investment suit you as a person and your life situation. Rob and I did not do that when we started investing. We adapted our strategies over time, and now we make very deliberate investments, but we can pass on our experience and let you know about how we do things differently if we started again. And this is one of those things. So please, don't do what we've done. Learn from our mistakes shortcut the process and get very focused now on what type of properties you should be investing in that will help you hit your end goals. But if you've got something useful from this video, you'll get so much more from the Property Podcast, where every week we bring you what investors really need to know. You can listen anywhere you listen to your podcasts. Just search Property Podcast.